So you want to raise the debt ceiling? I wish we didn't have to, but if we don't the government won't be able to pay what it already owes, and that could trigger a collapse of the economy, not only of the United States, but of the world. At current rates, the government will spend $1.7 trillion more than it collects in taxes. From whom can it borrow enough to cover that deficit? It can borrow it from foreign countries. Borrow foreign currencies? How would it work to send out checks for Social Security or Medicare in Chinese Yuan? Of course it would have to be US dollars, but those countries hold a lot of dollars from their trade deficits with us. Most of those dollars have already been loaned back to us. Our annual trade deficit is only about half a trillion dollars a year, half of that to China. Not nearly enough to cover the 1.7 trillion. Couldn't we borrow at least a quarter trillion from China? No. Even if they were willing, they need a lot of dollars to buy foreign oil to meet the demands from their growing middle class for things like cars. Then we can borrow from the oil producing countries. We are already doing that to pay for the quarter trillion dollars worth of oil we import. Can the government borrow more from Americans? Not much more, and not enough. It is already soaking up most of the investment dollars available, leaving less for things like creating the jobs needed to pay taxes, or to import oil needed to keep the economy going. Can the government just create more money out of thin air the way it did in the two rounds of quantitative easing? That was done to avoid collapse of the financial and housing sectors, but all it did was slow and postpone the collapse. That targeted inflation is already spilling over into other sectors like oil and food prices. Another round would trigger inflation in the rest of the economy, not only of the US but of the world, which relies on the US dollar to back their own currencies. That is why the administration is so determined to raise the debt ceiling instead of doing another round of quantitative easing. Wouldn't failure to raise the debt ceiling result in a default by the US on its debt? No. The U.S. government collects enough taxes to cover interest and principal rollover on its bonds. But it would have to severely reduce spending for everything else. Wouldn't that mean cutting things like Medicare and Social Security, and laying off federal workers, or cutting their salaries? That could add more than a million to the five million already out of work, and most of those government workers don't have the skills needed for private sector jobs. There would be even fewer people working to support dependents and pay taxes, or provide the demand needed to create jobs or prevent failures of many businesses. That seems worse than just printing money and inflating the currency. We have no good alternatives at this point. Hyperinflation would have the same effect, except that it would sink the world economy and not just our own. In our determination to care for the unproductive members of our society, we are destroying the ability of the productive to produce, turning even more of us into dependents. That is a death spiral. You've got to be shitting me. You mean we have to reduce government care of the young, the old, and the sick, perhaps to the levels in poor countries? To the level that can be supported by a typical working family that has a few young, old, or sick people in it. If the typical family cannot support a higher level of care, then neither can they do it by paying taxes to government to pay out benefits or hire government workers or contractors. Government is not some magical way to magnify our taxes into more than we could provide directly, on the average. People might spread risk by buying insurance, and insurance companies can invest the premiums to help pay the benefits, but their rate of return on their investments is likely to be no greater than if the family invested their money in a family business. Government can't do better than an insurance company might, and probably less. Shouldn't Congress legislate spending reductions, instead of putting the president in the position of having to decide how to distribute the pain? Of course, but most members get more pressure from constituents demanding more spending than from those who want to reduce it. Even members of the Tea Party movement do not seem willing to accept the cuts that will be needed, or else don't want to do so openly. Couldn't Congress raise taxes? To cover $1.7 trillion? That is $6,000 per person per year. But a typical family is about two dependent children, two dependent grandparents, and only two parents fit to work, one of whom is half-employed or does not make enough to pay taxes. That means the one employed taxpayer has to carry the burden of the others of more than $36,000 a year, 
which is more than most of them make. Forget about taxing the rich. The rich do not earn enough to make much difference even if they were taxed at 100% of their earnings, and doing that would destroy even more jobs, further reducing taxes collected. Couldn't we tax corporations, or at least reduce the subsidies to them? Yes, but corporations don't really pay the taxes on them. They just pass the taxes along in the form of higher prices, reductions in hiring, or reductions in dividends, most of which go to insurance companies and pension funds. The ultimate burden still eventually falls on that individual taxpayer, one way or another. So it seems all we can do is put more people to work, but how can we do that? That will be the subject of the next video.